Good day. In this video, we're going to talk about the Ben Shetler 120. I skied this ski for several years now, and I'm going to tell you about my experience, what is good, what's bad, and who it might be for. There's some links in the description uh, if you want to get a pair, and then you'll help us produce more content. Let's hit it. This ski has been designed the same way for the last three years and thank god for that because the one before I didn't like it so much. More on that later. Um, the design is rather symmetrical like the rocker and camber profile. It has 30% rocker in the front, 30% in the back and then 40% camber on the foot. And this has some implications since it's shaped that way. You stand a bit further forward it's gonna like turn swivel pretty easily while you have to have that fat wide ski to make it float now when you're standing a bit further forward. Uh, while it's not symmetrical this way, the tail is slightly skinnier than the nose and that is a good thing. It's going to make it sink down a little bit despite the otherwise symmetrical uh, rocker profile. So let's bend it. This ski is manual. <laughs> it's springy, like a typical uh, Tomic ski. They put some carbon in it. Carbon, back one. Do you hear that? They're cracking. That's satisfying. It's brand new. I haven't skied this one. It's bendy, but stiff enough to go charging on pretty cruddy snow. And um, yeah, the flex pattern is smooth. It's, it's going to allow you to have a nice time doing some butters, switch landings, and um, have some fun. Um, let's talk about what it feels like on the slope. So I've only ever skied the 184 centimeter model and it comes with a 19 meter radius. So when you ski this bad boy on the slope, it turns. Like you can do big swooping turns and they feel surprisingly good. However, the bad thing with doing or riding this ski on the slope is that since it's so wide, you can feel that leverage the ski has of your ski boot. You're gonna be really strong to keep the ski on edge. And then the other bad thing, since it has some uh, rocker in the front and the back, like it doesn't feel super stable. But the good thing is that you can carve around the slope to your powder run, and it's kind of fun, which you can't do on all fat skis like this. So that's a big plus. But skiing hard pack on a ski like this, it's not just uh, difficult. I talked to a uh, ski designer at Faction Skis and he told me a fun fact. Um, please verify this in the comments if you know more about it. That when skiers have skis wider than 110 millimeters, um, people have much more knee injuries because they're not quite strong enough to keep the ski on edge. So be careful if you are not uh, very advanced with a ski like this. Because the less uh, advanced skier you are, you gotta make sure that you ski it mostly in powder. Because it's difficult to ski on uh, cruddy. Because if you, if you ski cruddy stuff and you're kind of side slipping, it's like dunk, 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 dunk. But you can feel it like you wanna have strong knees for doing that. But on the other hand, this ski is totally not designed as a slope ski. But it's worth knowing that you can do it surprisingly well anyway. To the powder. Skiing this one in powder. This one obviously thrives in bottomless powder, uh, which had a fair bit of last season. It was red. Never been to Japan, but like, that's what it's for basically. And uh, for the playful kind of skier too, they want to do that. So when you ski this one in really deep powder, in trees especially, it feels nimble, you can easily pivot it around because you're standing in the middle, you got the rock profile, it's like, it's easy to ski in the trees. And uh, wow, it's a good time. Skiing bigger lines of really soft powder, like swooping big turns of face. And this one, because the way it's designed where you stand more in the middle, it can feel like when you're turning it in powder, like the outside ski, I sometimes feel like gets, uh, 
can feel a little bit nervous this way. And also, since I'm standing a bit further forward, it feels a little bit like you want to be a little sensitive with the fore aft, meaning like how much you lean forwards and back. Like there's a nice little balance point where you want to be for having this key turn as nice as possible. Those big swooping turns. So that's a bit of a downside with this um, like more symmetrical design that big swooping turns you can feel a little bit nervous and you want to be a bit precise with it. So I think the ski is a bit for the expert skier. Playfulness. Kind of feel like uh, Atomic designed the ski for me. I don't think that's true. But it's um, a very playful ski. And it's also very lightweight for being uh, so wide that uh, having a touring binding going on shorter tours is fine and uh, that's not for now. Playfulness. This ski is so much fun. I love chucking some nose butter threes, do some 180s, maybe even switch takeoff. Switch takeoff can feel Skiing switch on it doesn't feel super stable. It feels kind of kind of strange, but it's just always difficult to ski switch in powder. Um, it's just extraordinarily playful for its width because it has the short radius that helps you carve in, carve out. Um, let's compare it a little bit to other skis I've been skiing. So in this category, I had a few skis. Um, Falco chopsticks, they were like full rock good, fat, really quite nimble in the trees, I enjoyed it. But they sucked on slope and they turned not good if it was cruddy, I, yeah, not the best. Then I changed to a line magnum opus. They were lightweight, the design was almost identical to these and I thought they were amazing. But then I skied into a small tree at high speed, broke the nose, so I was very unhappy with the durability of those ones. So then I thought everyone loves the Ben Shettler 120 and I always wanted to have a pair. So I got the 20, or bought the 2017 version with the old man and I was so disappointed. I thought it didn't turn as good as the line did on slope and um, they were much heavier. The line was made out of balsa wood core. Um, I, I was quite disappointed actually. What was the hype? Um, so that sucked. And then Atomic sponsored a couple of uh, our videos with this model and, if, and I changed. And then I was like, wow, this is similar to what I experienced with the line Magnum Opus, uh, where I could turn on the slopes again. And since it was so light, doing 180s, 360s felt really nice and stable. I liked it a lot. Um, so I love the update they did for 2018 or 19. Till now, the last three models have been the same. It's freaking great. Really into it. Who is it for? I think it's easy to start with who it's not for. Like the, the really, like the beginner to intermediate skier. Don't get it, it's too wide. Once you're good enough, yes. Like when you're higher intermediate or like advanced, you can ski pretty good. It can help you to ski powder better or easier since it's so wide and it helps you swivel around from one turn to the next pretty easy. This one is for you who loves to powder and play around. Ski that deep North America and Japanese, occasionally European powder and uh, want to check a little butter and switch landing every now and then. Then it's brilliant. Mounting of this ski is pretty straightforward. I think start with recommended and see if you like it. You can always remount it later if you want it to feel more directional. And if you move it back maybe three centimeters, when you do those swooping turns where I complain on the outside ski being a little wobbly, you might get a little better. But at the cost of more difficult to do switch landings and do butters. So uh, experiment, but start on recommended. Could also mention that I ride it with a uh, touring binding, one of these shift ones, every now and then when I'm gonna do some ski tours within the ski resort where I take the gondola up and then do a few hundred vertical meters with the skins on and then shred down. Because um, it works good since it's such a lightweight construction, this ski, just a wee bit heavier than my wheel touring skis, the Backland 107s. Anyway, 
If you want to get a pair of skis, we got some links for you in Europe and the US below. And uh, then you support us making more videos by clicking on them and using that. Uh, it's a brilliant ski and uh, you can always let us know in the comments below what you want us to review next. Have a good day and see you in the next one. Ciao.